everybody. My name is Terry Thomason. I'm a strategic analyst with Canberra College. I'll go through a few of the dashboards that we created. Our big part of getting on with Intrinsic was we needed something that was usable for an everyday user, uh, not just an analyst who saw data in the back end in the raw form, but something for the end user to see that would be visual to them, that would make sense to them. Uh, for us, this was uh, the perfect product. So the one that's on the screen right now is a review that we do for all our programs. And what these program reviews are used for is really a, a program health card uh, in various stages, whether it's application, confirmations, enrollment in the program, as well as there's some program demographics on it, where our students are coming from for that program, the amount of graduates per year out of the program, and the applicant program choice. So whether in Canada you can have, we go through an application service and you can have up, up to five colleges on your application. So we'd like to know whether we were an applicant's first choice, second choice, third choice, fourth choice, or fifth choice. And then the last thing we've done here is a program costing analysis. You'll see that it has the school, the program, and then the 2012 CTO percentage is a contribution to overhead. That Canada or every program is gauged on the amount that it gives back to overhead. So you'll see in 2012, 31% went to overhead. Uh, in 2013, 34%, and then there was a drop in 2014, only 21%. And once you're in there, you can now see, instead of just the contribution overhead, you can see the enrollment. So where it says 2012 uh, GPOG, those are our general purpose operating grants. Those are the ones that the government funds us for. It shows we had five international students and then our total revenue and our total expenses uh, and gives your contribution overhead. So it gives you a, a good program report card. Um, it also gives you the availability to drill down into, so if I take our term of 2017-20, we can see in that, in that group, our age group of our students. And if we, we can drill down further if we pick the 19 to 24 year olds, we can filter by gender. And there we have, we could see how many female and how many male we have between 19 and 24 year olds very quickly. These are questions that I used to get uh, almost on a daily basis of our demographics. And now it's drillable by the end user and not just by my, me emailing it out to them. So that's a sample program review. Also, just to kind of explain how a lot of this was built. So Informer has the ability to create these queries in multiple different ways. And if we actually go in to edit this specific dashboard, we just wanted to kind of show you that there was um, seven data sets that made up this, this actual dashboard. So you have the ability to pull in data from multiple different places and in multiple different ways. You can do create data sets using our Informer 5 dataset designer, which is kind of that drag and drop field. And uh, we also have workspaces, which basically you can drag in CSVs and you can use those to create uh, your data. And then you can link that to your ERP system that you've already got set up. Or we have the ability to do native SQL queries also um, from your ERP system or other databases that you have. And then you're able to combine all of them into one. So we just wanted to kind of show you the flexibility that you have with um, inside of that. And also, just, just in general, too, you have the ability to um, filter the, this data just by clicking on. There's a lot of interactive stuff that you can do inside of here. So I can click on you know, a campus or a city, or I can, I can grab a decision, and it's going to change my data that's on there. So when these reports, these dashboards get shared out with any of the end users, you have the flexibility to kind of move um, between the, the filters and, and, and changing the data. So we're going to go on to another report to show you uh, something else that we've worked on. So this one here is it's a little bit different than the first one I showed. This one is a comparison board. And what this is is our, our key performance indicators. We're mandated by the uh, province of Ontario to survey all of our students uh, on various questions. There are about 80 different questions that we survey them on. It's a paper-based survey. And then we're sent the uh, raw results in a spreadsheet. And what this allows us to do now is take our a three-year comparison and compare by program uh, against how the province is doing. So you'll see in these 
uh, charts here that we're comparing our business program at Canador to all the other business programs in the province of how they're doing. Um, a key thing that you can see by trending here is that I've compared this one between our business program and our business accounting program. And you'll see in 2016 that we were only at 57% overall for student satisfaction. However, in 2018, we were up to 77.56. Whereas on the other hand, accounting went the other way. They were at 73.6 and then went down to 69.35. So what this allows the user to do is if we've made changes between 2016 and 2018, it allows you to give a measurement data. A lot of the changes we were doing at Candor is we didn't have the beginning measurement and therefore we would make a change and we wouldn't have anything to measure it by. So this gives you the user a, a very good view of not only did any of the changes we made in the program have any reflect on the overall satisfaction of the student, are we now higher or lower than the province? So the overall is the first comparison. The second comparison is a capstone question in the survey. So in Ontario, there's four capstone questions. And the first one is being overall, overall program quality. And so what it allows us to do, if we do see in the overall that we're uh, lagging behind the province, we can drill down into the actual questions to see what area is dragging us down, whether it's uh, facilities or faculty or services at the college, that sort of thing. Just to kind of explain the comparison board a little bit, uh, this the comparison board gives you um, almost like a, a third or fourth uh, way to break down your data. So you, you see that inside of um, here, we've got it broken down by the different uh, the different programs. And then you've also got it broken down by year. And then up at the top, we've actually broken it down by the questions. So the comparison allows you to do a side-by-side -side view of the same data broken down by whatever other metric that you want to do. A lot of times people will use these. They might use the, the um, comparison board with the, the year at the top, looking at year, year over year. So like financial reports and stuff like that, you can do that. But basically you can break it down by any, any other type of metric. So it just gives you a really nice side-by-side. -side. And if you add anything, then maybe I'll just jump in there real quick and show you. If you wanted to add anything else underneath, you could insert another visual. I could just go grab, you know, some kind of bar chart. I'm just going to do something quick. But we could break it down by, you know, school or something, and I can just add, add another chart, and it's going to basically um, break it down underneath. Yeah, so you can see that as you're, as you're starting to build out, you can build up and you can build over. That's just something to kind of show you how that comparison works. This is built um, upon a workspace, so right, workspace yeah. inside of here. So we can actually go look at that data really quickly. Um, go back out to the data sets. Yeah. yeah, so this was something that we were able to pull in. And we pulled this all the survey data in via a workspace. So workspace... Um, inside of our data sources, it just allows us to upload a CSV and bring in the data, and then we're able um, to convert the data into the graphs. Um, in a lot of these workspaces, you're actually able, if you have something that you're able to connect, you can connect it to um, your existing database, and then you can add to your data sets. And I'll show you a bigger data set when we get to that point, but that's kind of where this data came from, because none of this data is actually housed inside of um, the ERP system, they get this information from their... The, from the ministry. From, from the, the ministry. Yeah. So it's not something that is inside of there anyways, but they do need to report on it. Works. Okay, we're going to move on. So this one here, again, in another format that was the, the best suited for the audience. And what this is, is 2018, our upcoming term. Um, it shows how many applicants declined their offer their program offer, how many acknowledged it, uh, how many have actually confirmed into the program, and how many haven't made a decision at all. But what it allows you to do is, that's the School of Health Sciences, but I can drill down into all my programs in the School of Health Sciences. I can also see it by campus, and then I can see it by semester also. So these are students coming into semester one. I can see that we have 62 students coming into our, our practical nursing program so far in 2018. And how this relates, and I'll go down to the bottom here, 
this is applicant program choices. So as I mentioned, every student's allowed five choices on their application in Ontario. And the importance to this is when I go to a college drive, so I have out of my first choice applicants, I had 120 of them, 50 of them confirmed. So the conversion rate is very high. However, when you go to our second choice applicants, where it says we had 48 second choice applicants, you can see our conversion rate drops quite a bit. So that's the importance of being able to drill down into these uh, program choices is that we know if we don't convert our first choice applicants, we're gonna have a hard time filling our programs. So this gives the viewer a very easy drill down based on where people are at in their application stage. And then again, what program choice they were coming into our program. We've also found through data analysis that those students who confirm with a third, fourth, or fifth choice program are less likely to complete the program. Most of those students are in a program career mismatch, maybe moved away from home, or we weren't there for, they didn't get into their first choice college. Uh, so they may not be coming into Canada or uh, completely satisfied already with the, the process. So that's a, a key metric that we look at. Yeah. And, and basically this is built off of a pivot table. This specific query is out of Banner. Um, it's built through a SQL query, so a native SQL query. And what you can do with any kind of um, the state that we have, and what he did here was he created a pivot table based on specific items. And just to show you a really quick one, I could do something like program number or name. Actually, program name, and then I could go across the top and I could quickly create something based on decision code. And it's going to automatically give you the, the different items across the top. And then you can see underneath here. And what he had on that specific um, one is he actually had something that was a drill down. So we went from, you know, if we went from program name down into uh, like term code. So it's going to give you a drill down capability where you can actually expand and look at the data underneath. And then any one of these, you're going to be able to look at the data behind it. So that's where that actual um, visual came from, was from the data set. Um, and then he brought it over into a dashboard, which we can then share out with any of the users. Also, we wanted to show on uh, inside of this specific data set, uh, we can actually go into the data set, show you a little bit of what we did to add some of the columns. You can see this is the kind of the inside, the guts of the actual uh, data set and how it's built. And so over here, this is a query. So we, we wrote this with a native SQL query. It doesn't mean that you, can, you have to do that, but you can do it that way. Um, and then down below, what we were able to do is add fields from another data set. Now this other data set was built just by dragging and dropping fields into it. And if I click on that, I'm able to connect from one data set to another, and then I can add fields to it by choosing the, the actual fields that I want to add to the actual data set. What happens is those come in um, as another field and we have the ability to do that. The other thing that we were able to do was we were able to add a postal code locate, to create a location code to the data set. And, and because uh, Terry, they live up in Canada, we were able to write a custom uh, postal code to get the geo navigation code uh, based on that and create some maps that we're gonna show you in just a second. So we just wanted to kind of reiterate that the way that the data comes in, it can come in from all different sources and you can connect it together. And so we're going to go look at another report. Um, so this is just a sample of a few of our programs, but this is a, a chart that we look at uh, on a daily basis. And what it is, is our, our students who have accepted to come to Canada for the fall of 2018, versus our target that we had set for that program. So you can see that the aviation aircraft maintenance program is only about, I don't know, 60% their way to target. Whereas the aircraft maintenance avionics program has beat their car target by 14 people already. So we look at this on a daily basis to gauge uh, program cancellation decisions, uh, scheduling decisions, hiring faculty, anything that comes into a program or into a decision due to increased enrollment. 
over the past few years, we've been fairly flat with enrollment, about a 2% increase every year, but there's always anomalies where programs will outperform what we predict. So this allows us to make decisions much earlier in the process and gives us time to hire, schedule proper rooms, that sort of thing. Yeah, and the basically the target we pulled in from a, uh, a separate data set I and mean, we connected it to the existing data set just so you know how that came in and the confirmations was actually a calculated column that we created based on a certain criteria so if we look at the power script inside of here just to show you again um, another way to create data outside we we're able to say okay if it has a decision code of something then give it a one or a zero and then we were able to create that that data inside this data set which then was able to create this dashboard to compare those two. That's pretty much it. And you could also, if you wanted to filter, you could filter on this. I could go down into here, choose any one of these, and it would allow me to filter based on um, different items that are in the data set. We've got two more to show you guys. So I'm going to go down to program choice. So our last, uh, two more. So this one here shows, again, we showed it a little bit on the program review, but it shows the percentage of first choice to fifth choice applicants. So you'll see here that practical nursing is 48% of our program applicants are first, first choice applicants. And again, the, the importance to that is our conversion rates are much, much higher uh, with a first or a second choice applicant than it is from third to fifth. So here you can compare program to program of the amount of first choice applicants in the percentage of the overall application base. So it's a great visual to understand, for example, broadcasting TV video on the very end there has a, a very good first choice. And not only is that important to us for conversions, but it's also important because we know how we're competing against the province. So if we know we're getting 61% of the population as our first choice, uh, we're doing very well versus the other schools that offer broadcasting TV video. One more. Got our... Okay. So this one here breaks it down by catchment area. So every college in Ontario, there's 24 colleges, has a catchment area, and that's typically the surrounding cities that you draw the majority of your uh, students from. But what this allows us to do is drill down by catchment area. So I can see that Georgian College is the next biggest catchment area. We had 561 applicants from their catchment area. And then I can break it down by the programs that those applicants, yeah. There, the total applicants and what programs those students from their catchment area came into. And what we do with this information is we try and figure out what the net gain versus the net drain of applicants are. So if we both offer biotechnology technician at Georgian College and Canada College, we can see that five students from the Georgian College catchment area came into our program. Now we can reverse this to show how many applicants from Canada's catchment area went to Georgian College. So we get a net gain in the net uh, drain from catchment areas. Now, this one here is used a lot by our recruiters, and these are applications, offers, and confirmations by school board. So province of Ontario is, uh, um, area-wise, is very large, so we have to be strategic on how we do our recruitment and where we send our recruiters. What this allows us to do after a recruitment cycle is if I want to see if my recruiters went to Rainbow District School Board, I can drill down by how many students came from each high school. And I can also drill down into what programs they went into. So this gives us a, a little return on our investment. So if we know we went to Rainbow District School Board, got approximately 70 students from there, but we didn't go to the school board in Ottawa per se, we could see whether we're really getting a return on recruitment by going there or not. So this has every school board in Ontario based on individual high schools. We've got one more to show you. And this one here 
uh, again, is used a lot by our recruiters. And what we do is we map our recruiting mapping of what high schools we're going to based on the applications we got in return. So we can see we're comparing against 2018, 17, and 16. And if I scroll in, I can see exactly what areas students are coming from. So if we know that, and you see North Bay, this is where we're located. But if we went to Pembroke, to high schools in Pembroke, and we got 23 applicants this year, I can zoom out and go to 2017 and see that we got 40 applicants last year from that. So we know we're down about 18 applicants. So there may be reasons for that. Maybe we didn't go to those high schools on a recruitment uh, cycle this time. Maybe we did, we just got less applicants, but it allows you to do a comparison from what areas of the province you're getting your students from. That's it for our demo. If you guys have some questions, uh, we're here to answer anything that you can, we can do for you. How are the data sets made? SQL, Unidata? The data sets here, so Banner is a, is a SQL database. A lot of our customers are Unidata, Colleague, uh, Colleague SQL and banner. So just to kind of show you our data set designer. If I click on the new data set, we have these options. So the data set designer is the UI that's built into Informer 5. Native SQL would be just you know taking a native SQL that query that you already have and dumping it in or writing one on the fly. And the uploading the file would be taking an Excel document and just uploading it and creating the data set from there. But the data set designer itself I can just do a, a really quick demo. I'm going to go into, and I can go into like um, in, inside of Banner, set it up as your application information. I can then hit add field, and I can start adding in fields just by tapping into different um, information. And I can even search just by grabbing that information. And then you can see that all of the links between the Banner tables are, are sitting out here and if I click on any one of these the different fields are going to show up and I can add fields in from there so if I want to go down into Spriden which is you know the person's information we can get into there and add different um, information and as I hit close it's going to start to fill that in and then you can add criteria to your data sets and then you can add flow steps which is basically adding calculated columns doing the zip to geo that we did before you can add in fields from another data set or another data source. So that means that we could add fields from another database if we had the connection. Um, so basically, you can just kind of pull everything into one, create that big data set, and then you can create those reports off of them. And the reports in, in, in Informer 5 are what we actually kind of consider just any, any way that you're going to um, consume the data. So whether it be a dashboard, a comparison board, or just a data view, which would be just like a, an existing report and you just want to see the data, we can do that. And also on any of the data sets that you have, you have the ability to schedule and um, refresh these, these items. So if I go into the application one, we have something called jobs, which allows you to create a job and email. So I'm just going to show you that screen. You can add actions. So the actions that you have ability to do is send an email, send a burst email, send an FTP, or send to a file system. So you can really organize and customize this to make the processes a lot easier by, by getting the data to yourself. So there's lots of ways to consume the data, lots of ways to use the data, and then lots of ability to bring data in. This might be related. Saying, uh, the question is, how are you connecting the data sources together? Are you using the primary key? Yes, yeah. there's different ways to do that. Well, it doesn't have to always necessarily be a primary key, but it depends on what type of database you have. But if you look inside of here, we've got different types of data sources. So they're, they're co connected to their banner, which is Oracle. But if you click on new data source, you can see that all the different types of SQL there's U2, and then there's the workspace, which we talked about is just uploading CSVs. But if I go into the actual data source itself, this is a lot of the tables that are in Banner. It scans and brings them in, but when you click on links, you basically have the ability to um, create links inside of one database, but you can also create what's called a remote data source link. 
So if I do a remote data source, it would actually ask me what mapping I want to go from in one database to whatever mapping in the other. So it doesn't, if it's SQL, it doesn't have to be a primary key. It just really needs to be two fields that are the same in each of the tables that would join. So you can join it inside the data source, or you can actually join it inside of the data, the data set, like we said, where you can just join based on a field. Another question that came through is how long did it take to create the dashboards and the charts? We've been working on them really since we went live, but realistically, well, I've been here for a day and we've built two of the bigger dashboards, so they're very quick. A lot of it is, once you bring in the data, is just sorting it to see what data you want using the drill downs. Let me show you how to build the actual visuals. That might be a better way to kind of see it. So in terms of building the visuals out, if you click on here, so we have something what's called a discover item. So we have the pivot, which I showed you, but the discover, if I wanted to just kind of start playing with my data, I have the ability just to, you know, click on program name and it's going to automatically create a visual. And then if I wanted to kind of change what I'm looking at, um, I could change the grouping or I could change the series. Like if we wanted to say program and then decision code, it's already breaking it down and stacking that data. And then I could save that visual. And so when I save that visual to the data set, everything that I save kind of comes over into our visuals area. And then when I go to create the actual dashboard itself, I can take any of these visuals or create new visuals on the fly. If I go over to reports, I can do a, a really quick new report too, just to show you that. We have the ability just to basically take any of that stuff that you've already attached to the data set and, and create a new dashboard. So it's really not creating the visuals, it's really getting the right data behind it yeah. that is t that takes a little bit longer. The dashboards are very easy yeah, to so make. Once you have the right data and the right outputs, the dashboards are the easiest part. So if I go grab, um, just go grab the big one here and I can hit save. Um, basically it's going to go out and it's going to say, okay, well, what kind of, what do you want to do inside of here? So I can say, I just want to insert, I want to insert any of my saved visuals. And it's going to give me the um, ability just to add these visuals based on, you know, what we've already created. And you can modify those visuals. I can even create new visuals. So like if I, I have those, but then I want to insert on top of that a different type of chart. I want to go do a pie chart because we don't have one look pretty. Um, I can do it based on campus. I can hit save and it's going to create that chart. So you can see that the, the actual creating the charts isn't hard. It's really making sure that the data that you're that you're trying to display is correct. Another question came in. How do you publish these dashboards to end users? Are they informer users or do you use links or do you have a portal that you use to present dashboards? So over here on the right hand side, once you've created a dashboard, you have the ability to create a uh, generate an external link. Depending on how you decide to set things up, if I um, copy this link and I open it up in my browser, it's I'm now outside of Informer. But um, I do need to let you know that you know, of course, this is inside your network. So you either have to be VPN inside the network, or somebody in your IT area would create a public facing website. But you also have um, the ability in here to do um, an embed. So you could embed it into a portal. So if you have SharePoint or something like that, um, it would actually embed the whole visual and you would be able to do it that way. Can you prevent drill downs? Yes. Good question. And I can show you, I can show you yeah. where that is. And we do prevent, uh, we don't allow users to go to the data level just for privacy reasons. Yeah, so on each of the visuals themselves, you can click into the configure button and um, you have the ability inside of here to, right here. So the drill downs, this is where you can say, I don't want people to um, view data. Um, I only want them to be able to drill down on specific fields. So I can click, I only want um, like uh, maybe, level code and just picking stuff here, program name. And I can hit done. And then when I hit save, I'm not going to be able to drill into the data and I'm not going to be able to drill down on any of those other fields. So if I click here now, I only have level code and program name. So if I click on program name, I can click on that. And if I click here, I cannot, you can see that I don't have the ability to drill into the data itself and see the, the data behind it. 
You do have the ability to set global colors. That's something that you could set throughout your entire uh, institution. So as Terry had said, he, he made sure that Canada um, was red because that's their color up there. <laughs> so um, everywhere in here, you know, there's uh, red for Canada, but you can set those throughout your entire system. One final question is how easy are the reports to use for end users? Are they interactive? Let me go into one more thing. Let me go back to the reports. So, uh, to data. I didn't actually touch on, so the, the data sets are really a concept that is new to Informer 5. Um, it's really a way to kind of bring in all your data from different places and then be able to kind of slice and dice it inside of here. And that way, this is also the data set could get refreshed on any kind of increment, time increment you want. And then once it's refreshed, then you're not hitting your production environment each time. So you can kind of play with the data. And so there's stuff that we have in here where I can hit filter. So we, we try to tell people to over select on their data sets. So then you can just filter based on different stuff. So if I want to click on, you know, or if I want to just choose any of these fields, I can hit term. I can then click into here and I can just choose, you know, any term or multiple terms. I can do 2000 um, there and I can show more and I can grab both of these and I can close. And that's going to now filter based on that term code. I can save those filters and those filters will go with you. It flows through with the actual data sets themselves. Hit save, it's going to save that filter. I can get back to it at any point. Um, I can do multiple filters. So if I wanted to grab that, that save filter and then I want to go filter on, let's say, program, I can start typing in program name and I can then filter on practical nursing. And then I could merge those if I wanted to and save those filters. So you have this ability to kind of really kind of play with the data. The other thing you can do inside of here that's kind of neat is if you grab, let's say, a date field, um, like app date, I can actually group on app date and it automatically knows it's a, it's a date field. So then I can just say I want to group by year. That's going to give me all the years and then I could do aggregates. I can add, you know, different types of aggregates or I can just do like a count. But that way you can kind of really quickly look at your data. If you want to break it down even further, we could group again. So if I want to group by program, I can do that. So then if I want to look under here, it's kind of grouping. And this is similar to what Terry did with his pivot table too. So you have this uh, ability to kind of interact with the reports or the data set itself and then you can create the, the visuals from them. I think that was the last question. Again, we thank you all so much for joining us today. If you'd like some more information or would like to schedule a personalized demo so you can see how Informa works in your environment, feel free to reach out to us at Informa Sales at Intrinsic.com or give us a call. There's plenty of information on our website, including product reviews, white papers, reports, all kinds of cool stuff on our website at Intrinsic.com slash Informa. We look forward to hearing from you.